Hey, check it out, guys. We got a package. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think it is? It must be a frozen. It must be a fishing rod. <laughs> what? Diapers? <laughs> ah. What else is in here? Oh, hey. Check this out. Whoa. What is that? So I guess this goes together like that. Drive it into the ground. And then. It's kind of violent. All right, let me show you how this thing works. You put your rod in the rod holder and lock it down like so. Then you take the line going from the spool and you pull it back and you put it around this little trigger right here, okay? And when a fish pulls the line, there it goes, pops up. After some testing, I discovered that these rod holders don't work well with rods longer than eight feet or rods that are particularly heavy. The springs just don't have enough force to lift them up, but most catfishing rods work quite well. So this is the instructions it comes with, which is pretty, pretty minimal. You can adjust the spring from here down to this hole. And that makes it stronger for bigger rods. And you can take this hairpin out and move the trigger forward, which decreases the sensitivity of the trigger. So if you want more sensitive, less sensitive, this little thing right here is what's supposed to lock it onto the, uh, the stand. All right, let me show you some modifications I did. I don't like that you have to pull your line all the way back to this trigger. Um, it makes it really easy for your line to get snagged up on things. And then when you pick up your rod, your line's tangled up with your handle or something. So I took this uh, piece of braid and I attached uh, one knot to the trigger and then I put a surgeon's loop in the other end of the line and put it in like this. And that allows, allows me to secure the line um, much closer to the reel. And then when you get a bite, it just pops right off. If you activate the spring when there's no tension on the line, like it goes off because of the wind or a strike with no hookup, the rod falls out of the rod holder. But if you do it with a fish on the line, the tension keeps the rod in the rod holder pretty well. It doesn't look like your rod would come out of the rod holder either. Well, it's been a little over a year since I started this video and uh, I've been using these rod holders on and off and if you guys follow my channel pretty religiously, you might have seen me using these um, here and there. I'm going to give you kind of the lowdown of what I think after a year of using these things. But first, I've got to set up my rod holders. All right, there we go. Keep, it, keep your rod up. Keep your rod tip up. Keep your rod tip up, bud. No Over way. here. Oh, there we go. Well, there we go. That was a nice, nice carp. Looks like he's about 12 pounds. Woo! Did that rod holder do well, Tom? Down like this. It went flying up in the air. Well, guys, that rod holder worked pretty darn well. This 12-pound carp gave it a nice workout. Did you have a good time with that, Tom? Mm -hmm. 
Well, listen, it is pitch black. My gear's a mess. I'm going to go back to the house and I'm going to give you my full review after using these things for about a year. There he goes. High five, bud. All right, guys, so let me give you my honest opinion about these rod holders. So uh, the pros are that they're cheap, they're durable, uh, and they keep your rod from going into the water. That's the big reason I, I like these is, is that when a fish grabs your rod, it springs up in the air and acts as a shock absorber, and it locks in pretty darn tight. Um, it really would take quite a fish to be able to rip this out of the rod holder. I, um, you would, I think you'd really have to rip the rod holder clean out of the ground to be able to take your, your rod away. So that's really nice. And unless you've got your drag cranked down really tight, I don't think that's gonna happen. So it's a very light, small, durable, cheap rod holder that's good for keeping your rod from going in the water. And it springs up in the air and lets you know when you've got a fish on. Uh, the, the downside is it only works with certain sized rods. If your rod's too long, if it's too heavy, the spring won't be strong enough to lift it up. So a good six, seven foot rod, uh, something light, like a you know, medium, medium power rod or, or less, works really well in here. Um, you also need fish that are strong enough to trigger this. It takes quite a bit of force to make that little trigger go off. So if you're fishing for panfish, I doubt it's going to do it. Um, bullheads probably wouldn't either. You need like catfish or carp or something substantial to trigger it. Um, the other thing is I thought it would kind of like set the hook when it springs up. Not really. I mean, it doesn't spring up with much force. And uh, so it, it doesn't really do that much uh, for setting the hook. But uh, they're reasonably priced. They're durable. They work okay. I like these better than those little coiling uh, rod holders you get at Walmart. The ones that look like a little spring that you stab into the ground. But one thing I don't like about these rod holders uh, is that they're a little finicky to set up. You know, pulling the string back and hooking it around the trigger takes a little getting used to. It's, it's a bit fidgety at first. But, you know, once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. Well, anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description to where you can buy these rod holders if you're interested. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more great videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. Thanks for watching, guys.